uh, welcome back to Ed and Weir. It's my face! Um, so, something I got asked about an awful long time ago was, I make for, I've made for my gaming group, uh, like, um, player laptop aids, essentially. And not laptop in the computer sense, it's laptop in the laptop sense. In the first place that we were gaming, um, we were subject to quite a lot of uh, space restrictions. Like the table that we had was big enough for us to put some physical representations of environments down and whatever else, but not a great deal. And but also it w it was the only aside from a small nesting ta uh, nested table, there wasn't anywhere for like dice rolling or anything like that. So I figured right, okay, there's see a need, fill a need, um, and I came up with making <coughs> boxes. And this one is entirely made out of like scrap and junk and stuff that I had in my. Uh, workshop today and I decided that I would make a video roughly showing how I've gone about making this. Um, the A lot of the um, like dimensions and whatever else they're a bit like off the top off the top of my head and whatever else and uh, my uh, carpentry skills will probably make someone break their computer. Um, all you need to remember is the uh, paper tray half of your um, box needs to be um, well, as I'll explain in the next part, uh, it needs to be a shallow, a very shallow depth, and then on the other half, you can pr is pretty much whatever you can see yourself as needing at the table. So, with that being said, uh, this could also be made. At, one of these could be made out of cardboard, um, uh, with just like a little bit more effort to like hide corrugation and stuff like that. I know it'd be a little bit more fragile, but hey, if it's what you've got access to, it's what you've got access to. Um, or even phone call. Um, so yeah, um, the, da, 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 there was something else I was going to mention, and I've forgotten it. Uh, oh well, if any, if it pops up, I'm sure I'll throw it in. Uh, right, okay then. So um, this has been a, a rambleatic intro, and so n next you'll see me in my little workshop. So, uh, oh, okay then. Bye camera. Well, here we are. Um, so <clears throat> how I'm going to go about making this is as cheaply as possible. Um, as, I said, as I said earlier on, there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't use just a, a fault, just any sort of like uh, regular A4 binder or anything to carry all of your sheets and stuff in. This is just more of a novel value. And for anyone who hasn't got access to like power tools and things like that, you can do this with like hand tools and that, it would probably take a lot longer and it might end up a bit rougher, but you can do it. Um, also, if you really wanted to, you can, because one, of, one that a friend of mine made um, was made out using cardboard and all he did was face it with some um, cardstock to cover up the corrugation and whatever else and he made it look like a tome. Uh, if I can find a picture of that, I will tag it onto the end of this video. If not, there's the idea for you. So. Um, I'm going to make just an El Generico version of this. I don't know how well this will show up. Oh, you're going to see all the stuff that's on the back of the page as well. That's no good. Uh, let's see if I can correct that. I'm grabbing some more sheets. So yeah, uh, I've done a doodle. It's not going to show up too clearly on camera. This is the way that I'm going to be doing the corner joints. With um, The crossbar is different. It doesn't matter so much. Then the hinge, I'm even going to be making the hinges myself and I'll be showing you how I've done those. Um, and regarding a locking mechanism, because I'm not actually buying anything to make this, for ones that I've made for other people in the past, there I have bought a hasp and staple and some form of padlock, or I've even bought like luggage clips and just fitted those to it. But for this I'm not buying anything for it, I'm just using what I've got, and what I'm going to be making the main two boards out of are some scrap pieces of, I think this might be... Uh, Actually, let's do away with guesstimation. This might be, this would, this is... 8mm plywood. Um, you, I, I've gone down to using 3mm uh, plywood um, in the past doing this. Yes, it ends up a little bit flimsier, but to be honest, it's holding paperwork and dice. It's It doesn't need to break any world records. So, um, anyway, I'm going to be as, trying to be as brief. I'm going to do cuts whenever I'm using machinery because um, well, I, I, I could do a little health and safety thing before I use each tool, but a lot of what I do refers to the don't do as I do, do as I say methodology. 
so yeah anyway back to being um, quick about this so the two main boards are going to want to be uh, for my purposes are 320 millimeters that's the um upright or i suppose if it's laying down the horizontal um and then the uh, across ways would be 230 millimeters um work that out yourself for uh, conversion methods um it's a little bit big it's about the right size width wise for an a4 sheet of paper but it's taller than an a4 sheet of paper and that's so that if you don't get anything stuck because it's just a pain in the ass oops um if you knew how to bleep that i would have um anyway um i'm anything else worth noting on this oh right so i've got my two pieces of plywood i've already and this isn't going to show up at all on camera no, I've already gone about and um, drawn out the two boxes. I'm going to be using the bandsaw to cut these out, and then for any of the rough edges, I've got a table sander here. Alternatively, you could use a jigsaw to cut these out, and you could use a belt sander, or you could even hand sand them. It's just speed, preference, and ability. Um, so, yeah, I will go ahead and get that part done. I am, I'll cut those out, and then it'll be getting on to making the sticks, and I'll have a little bit more of a waffle to do with those in a moment. So, Boards ahoy. Okay, so uh, I'm back again. I've done all of my uh, cuts. So I've got the odd T piece. I actually decided rather than using the eight pieces of wood, and this is a lot with a lot of my project, is that they kind of just evolve on the fly, um, is that I'm just taking the off cut, like from the T piece, to get the piece either side. And yes, this is off centre. Just, I just decided to make it off centre. Um, ignore the voices in the background. Um, we are just taking the off cut pieces I'm going to use those for the edging now they overhang slightly and that's a bit more for the wider pieces purpose than it is for the short pieces so I've just got to nip off the excess um, from each one of these and then it's PVA gluing and they're around here somewhere and just I don't know if they're sharp on camera see if I can just hold them to show you these are just like headless nails not particularly great, I don't think anywhere uses them anymore, but I've got a lot of them, so I'm going to use them. And that's just to hold it all in place while the glue's sitting. So I'm going to get on with that. The frame, this is the framework for the A4 side, and as you can see, in, um, in terms of concept, I'm going to glue a piece of ribbon that will fit underneath this, so that you can pull it and it will lift all your paperwork up, so you can just easily pull it all out. So, and then the corresponding side will be a lot simpler, because that's just boxy edges. So I'll get on to uh, gluing because no one wants to see that. It's just running a bead of glue around all the edges, make sure everything's straight, putting it all in place, and then um, I will cut the, um, as I showed in my also technical diagram, it's in, it's in the box, diagram. I'm not actually, now that I've kind of lost a third of the wood from how I'm now doing it with the, the roof part. It'll actually just be as if like you remove this third block, so it's just two steps that overla overhang each other, glue glued and pinned together. And that'll be how the larger side of the box is done. And yeah, so I will get on to gluing and pinning, and then I'll show you how those corners go together. And then more gluing and pinning, and then I, while they are gluing, I will get on to making some hinges. Hopefully you find that a little bit more interesting. I'll see you then. Okay, so um, <clears throat> it's been a few hours. I used um, proper wood glue. I haven't used like watered down PVA glue, like school glue sort of stuff or anything like that. I've used, I use three different types of PVA glue. You've got stuff that's used for um, plastering and, and readying surfaces, etc. Then you've got school glue, which is like pre-watered down stuff. And then I use proper wood glue for proper wood glue jobs. Um, now, a little bit of a disclaimer. I'm not a carpenter, and to say I'm any I'm competent at woodwork would probably be an insult to the profession. That's why I've ended up with like slight hiccups. Ooh, if it will zoom in, yeah, you know, I've ended up with hiccups like that. The thing is, still sound um, completely sound, like it's not going to fall to bits or anything like that. And you can go in. I gather up uh, fine sawdust, oh, fine sawdust in just a pot, um, just from the saw and from the sander and you can go in with some PVA glue and you mix it up and use it like a filler and that will just hide any any of it um, pretty well anyway so yeah we've got the two halves they fit together okay uh, now I've got to go ahead and figure and make some hinges so 
um, just this little waffle out of the way and then it will also also I've got to yet cut a or well, measure out and cut a space piece to go across that's nice and simple though because all that will entail is where do I want it how wide does it need to be and then trimming off the 10 mil that goes over here um, because otherwise it if you put too much paperwork in this side this isn't going to close because this will fall foul of it so uh, I'll cut that I'll fit that and then, as I said before, I will be making some hinges, and then we're not far from done. So I'll see you then.